My name is Matt Scholz. I'm the director of the Waterloo Center for German Studies and I'm an associate professor of German in the Department of Germanic and Slavic Studies at the University of Waterloo in southern Ontario, Canada. GermanStudies.ca has asked me to say a few words on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. For me, if I may start with a personal note, it is rather hard to believe than it has already been 20 years since the wall came down. On 9th of November 1989, when the wall opened, I was in my last year as a student of German and Russian languages, linguistics and literatures at a teacher training college in Leipzig, East Germany. So for me, 20 years of the fall of the Berlin Wall also means it has been 20 years since I've been a student. Now, being a student in Leipzig at that time was of course very intense and incredibly interesting an experience. Um, because it did not just give me the chance to witness these significant historical events firsthand. It also gave me the chance to participate in demonstrations and many of these smaller events and actions uh, which all together made up the period which we call today the event, the time of change and transition in East Germany. Now, I do not want to bore you with a personal narrative. As a Germanist applied linguist, I much rather take a brief look at how these historical events, the historical periods, the social, economical, political and cultural commonalities and differences, uh, continuities and discontinuities are reflected in the changes and differences between the kind of various varieties of the, of the German language. These become most obvious if one looks at the lexis. Um, so, for example, if one compares the vocabulary used in East and West Germany prior to the fall of the wall, given the rather different political systems in the two German states, um, it is hardly surprising that there were differences in the political vocabulary. So, West Germans, of course, would speak about uh, Bundestag and Bundesrat in order to label the two chambers of Parliament and East Germans would use words like Central Committee and Politburo in order to label the uh, two most powerful councils of the state party. But these differences did not just exist in the political domain. Sometimes they were simply due to different borrowing processes. Um, when West Germans borrowed the word stuntman from American English, East Germans borrowed the word cascadeur from French in order to express exactly the same concept. And these differences might have been most obvious in the lexis and most frequent in the vocabulary, but this is not the only area where we find these differences. We also find differences in grammar, very few of them, and we find differences in discourse practices. So grammatical uh, differences, one example, if you look at the preposition on and the use of the preposition on in front of or in construction such as an Weihnachten and an Ostern used by West Germans and kind of introduced by West German speakers um, to express concepts such as at Easter at Christmas, East Germans at the same time stuck with the older uh, preposition in this construction, at least with the older preposition zu, and would still say um, constructions such as zu Weihnachten and zu Ostern. The a linguist called Schlosser made a kind of more general argument which goes along these lines uh, arguing that East Germans are generally um, more conservative in their linguistic behavior than West Germans are. On the other hand, in late 89, early 1990, East Germans were very innovative, very creative and very imaginative, not just in their use of language but also in coining new words during these um, times of change and transition. So they would introduce words like Ben Niles for a political turncoat or words like Betonkopf for a kind of very stubborn political hardliner. But if we look at uh, these kind of lexical differences in the overall context of the German language, then their numbers minute. Now we've got about 
false sounds and um, words that are different between East and West. Um, this compares to about half a million words in the German language. Um, so this is less than 1%, which means more than 99% of the vocabulary is shared by both groups of speakers in East Germany as well as in West Germany. Um, and these 40 years of rather minute changes, differences, uh, particularly as I said in the, in the vocabulary, were followed by 20 years after the fall of the wall, 20 years of experiencing and introducing language change together. Of course, in the last 20 years, new words entered the German language. Uh, words were borrowed from English, such as googeln. Um, other verbs were created in German, so there's a verb Simpson, which is based on an English acronym, namely SMS, and basically was sounded out. And then a verb was created for to text, and that became Simpson. Moving from linguistic change, the way language changed, um, very quickly to the way linguists changed over the same period of time. In the 1950s and 60s, there were a few German, West German linguists who argued quite strongly that the German spoken in East Germany deviated significantly from the standard spoken in West Germany and that the language of East Germany was kind of corrupted and polluted. And eventually, the fact of the existence of the two German states would lead to two languages spoken in these two states. Now, of course, we know today that these political rather than linguistic arguments are long superseded by sound empirical studies and linguistic arguments to the effect that there are many more commonalities between East and West German uh, than there are differences. This from a linguistic perspective leads me to the conclusion that there, has, there never has been a wall going through the German language. Perhaps a couple of interesting, maybe even fascinating, um, little stumbling stones on the way.